we welcome in the athletics finest, our, our man Anthony Slater, kind enough to join join us. It's all, always great to talk to Anthony, particularly during the series, because Ant-Man covers both the Sacramento Kings uh, and the Golden State Warriors. You have a pretty unique perspective on this. I love the way, and I don't know that we've talked since this, I love the way that you laid out uh, the preview before the series when you gave your prediction in, 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 in six and you gave your reason why uh, for the Golden State Warriors. And we'll we'll get into all of that, but let's talk about what we've seen over the last 24 hours. Uh, you saw De'Aaron Fox yesterday. What stood out the most to you? That he's going to play, right? You know, there are different ways that certain franchises handle a situation like this. And just having De'Aaron Fox out there when reporters are allowed in was signal number one that, that you know, they're they're not afraid to show his state. Mm-hmm. He was in a practice jersey. He was getting shots up. He literally, you know, and I know that he normally shoots at that court that's nearest to the reporters, but just the fact that he came and did his normal routine like 10 feet from us. I mean, the players know when iPhones are, you know, up and filming them. And he was sitting there in front of probably, you know, 14 iPhones probably doing his routine. So you don't do that if then you're going to not play the next day so i mean even before he came over and basically signaled to the world and i think in a lot of ways was signaling to his franchise like not clear me i'm good Mm -hmm. Uh, but that was my biggest takeaway like he really wants to play and he's almost pushing to play it seemed like yeah i mean he's he's been pretty emphatic from the time that he, he you know has been had a microphone in front of him since this happened that he's he's gonna be out there so you said you were at the practices, right? Or did yep. you just see? So yep. what, what was the what was the vibe in your opinion with with the Kings, man? A lot of people thought Sunday was a gut punch, you know, and and maybe you know left the Kings and and the roster unsure of themselves. From the clips that I saw, it seemed like business is normal, and they seemed like they were ready for Game Five. Did you get the same type of feel, or or did that loss in Game Four maybe hit them a little harder than than it let on? Um, I mean, it was pretty loose, you know, it, it, Mike Brown brings that level of confidence and like, he's been there, even if the franchise hasn't technically been there. Um, I think the Fox news is not good, obviously for the state of De'Aaron Fox's finger, but in some ways m- took the pressure and the storyline off of like, you know, m- messing up in the fourth quarter, right? Everyone was just there to talk about Fox. I know, uh, you know, Davion Mitchell comes over. He's not getting many questions about the you know fourth quarter he's getting more questions about how De'Aaron Fox looked at practice that type of stuff so uh it it seemed like they had moved on quickly large gap but you know you were talking Sunday afternoon to Wednesday night that's a huge gap in a series mm-hmm. that probably helps them uh ease into it and then I think they you know they're 2-0 and at home this series they have two more home games in this series if it, if it goes the full distance so I think there's a confidence level and they know what will be behind them tonight, uh, which is that crowd that has proven to not be invaded by Warriors fans, right? I think we're all confident going into tonight it's going to be, again, probably at least like 95% Kings fans. Do you have a feel for this series? Like, what is your what is your takeaway from, from what we've seen through four games? I think the Kings have arrived in a way that we didn't know. Yeah, you know, like, were they ready for this stage? And I just think they've proven that, yes, they are. Like, win or lose this series, I think Fox has shown he's a playoff-type player. Um, he's also, sh- you know, again, I was I, I put Demonis Sabonis fifth on the MVP ballot, and I know I was not alone uh, because he was, I thought, their best regular season player, right? Their steadiest force, playing through the thumb injury, all that. But De'Aaron Fox has to be their best player in a playoff series for them to be you know, a contending type team. And he has shown, I think, in this series, like he he is on that top tier. I mean, he's battling Steph mano and mano in a lot of ways in this series. We'll see how he looks tonight. I mean, this could be part of his first playoff series lore tonight, even, you know, if he plays well. So I think him getting there is a, is a big takeaway. And um, just the fact that the Kings are surviving, not like if you told me it was 2-2 right now, but I didn't, you know, see the first four games, I would have guessed, man, they got really hot from three for two games. They've kind of shot themselves into the series. No, they won a game. They went 9-32 to from three. Uh, overall, they have not shot that well. Kevin Hurd has been quiet. Murray's only played one good game. They've kind of won it with toughness, defense, pace, uh, and, and a superstar, you know, point guard who in a lot of ways is hiding what I think has not been a very good series from Sabonis. I love this series. This is yeah. this has been like great theater. Um, these these two teams, it's been said, you know, a lot, but just kind of trading haymakers. You know, the way the Warriors responded down 2-0 and, and, and gutting it out to get the series back to two. And now, you know, seeing what the Kings can do. Now the ball's in their court and everything else like that. I've loved this series um, from start to where we're at right now. 
going into this game five, though, a lot of people are saying winner of game five wins this series. Do you see it the same way, or there, are you still a believer in some of the other variations of what could happen for a team that loses game five? Yeah, look, I mean, it, I always love when people start to do that. Like, winner of game five, I think, is winning the series. Like, yeah, if you name a 2-2 two, two series. The winner of game five is very likely going to win the series because they're up 3-2. Um, so whoever wins tonight, I'm favoring. I think we all are going to come on the airways tomorrow and be like, you know, it'll be bold to pick the other team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I would agree that it's, in a lot of ways more important for the Kings tonight to get the win. Cause you don't want to be walking back to chase center, having lost three straight. It would kind of feel like they'd be walking the plank. Whereas if the Kings win tonight, you know, they're up three, two, the Warriors are certainly the underdogs, but you, you know, if they gave, if they gave a good counter punch in game six, game sevens can get weird. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm mostly just looking at Fox. You know, to me, the first five minutes of De'Aaron Fox will tell me a lot about the rest of the series. If he's aggressive, if he's looking for his shot, if he's fine going into contact, I think Sacramento as a city, the entire, you know, arena will feel at ease because you'll feel like this is still that, you know, um, mono e mono type series. But if if he's hindered at all, and I think we'll know early, it's going to be just really tough for the Kings. You 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 said you you said that in a really unique way, Anthony. That I, I think a lot of us have allowed to escape our mind is I mean I said this before. We're Russell Wilson right now. We're just trying to go one and zero every day, one and zero every day, baby. <laughs> That's right. But you you didn't say you know if you know it, 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 things start out slow, De'Aaron could be hindered in this game. You said this series, and that's something I think a lot of us haven't really like thought about. Is this isn't just a Wednesday issue? Mm. This is going to be an issue Friday. And By the should way, this, there is be a round, this is a round two issue for him, even if they advance, right? You know, yeah, like, right. Like, this is this is an issue moving forward uh, for De'Aaron Fox, which is, I don't think that's something a lot of us have really computed. It's so much, let's get, get, get the third win, get the fourth win, get through this series. Like, this isn't going to get better for De'Aaron. No, I mean, he talked about it yesterday. I think one of, he was very revealing. I appreciated it, right? He talked, you know, very detailed about his finger injury. But one of the things he said is if he doesn't wear the splint, he's been told he'd need a screw in his finger, uh, which just kind of tells you, like, this is a complicated injury where rest would really help it. Um, there has not been talk about surgery or not surgery. Perhaps maybe that's an off-season thing. How do but, you put a screw in it without surgery? Yeah, I guess. Never mind. Yeah, don't answer that. Go. I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah. That sounds terrible. But it isn't like a, hey, fight through it tonight. And, you know, it's not a sprained ankle. Jordan Poole sprained his ankle in game one. He was very limited in game two. By game three, four, he looked like himself, right? Because it's a basketball player. He tweaked his ankle. It happens. You, you're down for a few days. This is the Kobe Bryant. What did Kobe play on it for like six months, I heard? It was like December yeah. to June he played yeah. through it. De'Aaron Fox Rock will have four. to play through this thing as long as the Kings are alive. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna need I'm a De'Aaron need a Kobe moment tonight. He's gotta go for 42. <laughs> I need De'Aaron to get 42. Oh, tonight. Dude, dude, we, we would lose our minds. We would lose our minds. As long tonight. as the Kings won, yes. Well, if he just scores like five in the first four minutes, that place might lose its mind. It's Willis De'Aaron Reed. Reed. It's Willis Reed right there. You need more than Willis Reed because Willis Reed was like two buckets and I'll see ya. <laughs> you, you. Like you said, you might need 42 you, tonight. Need your Clive Frazier. Because Clive Frazier had, like I said, a 36-point triple-double in that game. Jordan uh, flute game, maybe. Yeah, yeah some, something, man, something. Um, we talked to Abonte Hill. Damian brought it up. And we were trying to figure out um, the Warriors on Sunday. Did they give the Kings their best shot? And when I ask you that, when I say best shot, for me personally, that doesn't mean they can't give you that again. It just means that's about the best that they can play. Do you think that's the case, or do they have another level? Um, than what we saw on Sunday. Well, I think they played like in an urgent way. I think Kerr coached a very desperate second half. Um, look at the minute totals. He never likes getting Steph up over 40 minutes. Uh, there was basically a seven-man rotation in the second half. He's trying to minimize uh, their vulnerable spots of the game. And I think, you know, Clay shot it well. Wiggins played a good game. Poole was solid. Steph was Steph. Like Draymond I had the type of just like full throttle energy you need from him. He, they they went to their wild card, which was always put Draymond on Fox for stretches. Looney was fine. Like collectively, it was a, a top level game from them, except they screwed up late. They almost gave it away. You know, you have a five point lead. You the the dumb timeout situation. Um, 
Steph going too early, Jordan Poole's turnover. Remember when Davion Mitchell had crashed into the Warriors bench and they had a five on four, mm-hmm. and Jordan Poole just you know kind of tossed it over to the Kings, which gave Mitchell a layup. Like that to me, if you are bigger picture looking at the Warriors, should be a concern because they were not a good fourth quarter and particularly crunch time team this season. I could name ten giveaway games. And oftentimes that's what a series is decided on. And if Harrison Barnes hits that three, that is the story of this Warrior season. Like they just keep punting away games. So, yes, I think that was about as strong a punch as they gave the Kings, and the Kings really absorbed it well until the last two minutes, where, you know, I mean, that was that went about as bad as it could have gone for the Warriors, except for Barnes missing. Mm-hmm. Has the you? I mentioned this when you joined us. You wrote an incredible article for the Athletic previewing this series. I think it was one of the best articles uh, on this series uh, that came out you know, before before it got started. Uh, and you picked the Warriors in six, and you said experience was going to be a big reason why. Through four, has the experience come into play yet for you? No, not really. Um, part of it, you know, it, to me, that was kind of like the cop out series prediction, right? It was like Warriors and six. It was the popular one. Maybe I was trying to be safe, not trying to get screenshotted. Uh, <laughs> but my and I remember part of that little section I wrote was the fact that, you know, the Warriors were what 11 and 30, I believe, on the road this season. Like, do you believe in that or do you believe in the the core, the dynasty core that literally is on an NBA record streak right now of winning a road game in 27 straight playoff series Mm -hmm. Uh, including i mean boston two games in boston last year to clinch the title um so far this series they've been the 11 and 30 team right they're 0 and 2 on the road they have to get one in sacramento um do you believe in the dna that we've always seen or do you believe in this season's flawed team i just picked the dna that i've seen but i mean i'm not uh, if De'Aaron fox is right uh, it's going to be difficult for them to win one of either of these two games in Sacramento. Mm. You you broken this thing down like like nobody's business, Anthony. You've done a great job the whole series. What are you seeing in the DeMontis Sabonis situation? Obviously, I think Golden State's doing a good job defensively, but I also feel like uh, ever since game two, Domas has played a little timid. I, I don't think he's felt comfortable and been himself. Are you seeing the same thing, or is it just kind of all Golden State's defense? Well, I think it starts with the scheme they put on him. They're being a little bit shameless in the in the cushion they're giving him, almost begging him to shoot. Um, I think, you know, look, the personnel matters. Like Draymond Green is a, is an all-time versatile defender, so he's getting a dose of that. Not only a dose of, you know, going one-on-one, but just everything that comes with Draymond. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think Demonis loves being the spotlight of controversy and – when you get wrapped up into a Draymond Green flagrant foul, you get wrapped up into controversy. Uh, but also, Kevon Looney's just really good. Like I think Kevon Looney is like a probably a top eight defensive center in the league. Like just you know, uh, they they did it to Jokic in the first round last year. They they made him a score. They took away a lot of the back cuts and you know Aaron Gordon, you know KCP type stuff that the Nuggets love to do. Um, and that you know Jokic didn't play a bad series but i just you have to solve them the warriors are very smart they're they're two big men they don't rim protect like traditional bigs but they uh they force you to play you know power ball and try to score through them and they believe that they're going to get enough stops and i think you've seen that in this series you know they, they baited him into those like muscle power drives believing they're going to contest it enough he's going to miss enough of them and they've taken away the dribble handoff and i'm not sure there's that great an answer for the Kings, except for Sabonis having to score more. And he doesn't even like, that's not even in his nature. Right. So it's, it's just kind of a tough matchup, I think for him. Oh, speaking of scoring more, we've, we, you know, we're talking about De'Aaron's, you know, finger, Demonte Sabonis's play. You think, I mean, Kevin Herter has got to be feeling the heat a little bit here at this point, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's schematically a little bit too, where pre-series the Warriors like, targeted him as like a guy they wanted to take away because they they felt mm-hmm. that the lifeblood of the Kings was the dribble handoff game and, and say the top dribble handoff guy on the Kings is Herder. Uh, but also Herder's kind of streaky, right? I mean, you guys have watched him all season. It's like three-week stretch, he's shooting 60% from three. Next yep. week's three-week stretch, it's like 25%. I just think he's cold at a bad time. Um, and I think he's the, – the other thing, and I know they've mentioned this, but – they're asking Kevin Herter to really ratchet it up defensively, like play mm-hmm. physical guard, you know, switch from clay to pool. Like he'll, he has Curry at times. He's not some unbelievable defender, but I think he's very in tune with like team defense and what's needed on the playoff stage. And mm-hmm. that tires you out. You know, it's, it's, it's a mental grind and a physical grind out there. And, 
And that makes those open threes a little bit more rushed, a little bit more, you know, tired from your base. And I think it snowballs. He, you know, he has a bad game. Maybe he thinks about it too much, but you know, we would have been saying the same thing about Keegan Murray before game four and he figured it out. So maybe there is a Kevin Herter game in the next three. What's your gut telling you tonight, Anthony? I think it's going to be close. And I think close in this series, particularly in Sacramento, leans Kings because De'Aaron Fox is who he's been all season in the fourth. But for him to take the Kings over the top, he has to be himself. He has to feel good on that touch floater from from 12 feet out. He's been automatic on that this series, right? And he can get that almost any time he wants it. So he has to be very good for for the Kings to win. The other concern, I would say, uh, from a King side is like, a Clay Thompson game probably looms, right? You know, pretty much once a series, he gets like white hot. Uh, I've seen him break hearts of, in arenas. I was in game six in Oklahoma City. Like, I would fear for that if he gets hot early from a Kings fan perspective. You have any thoughts on Davion and Steph uh, in the way Davion has played this series? That has impressed me uh, more than anything from the Kings side, like the way he's survived. Because I think, you know, what's been underrated, he's hitting his jumper like at a decent enough clip in this series. That moon ball shot he has, by the way, I think he's touching the rafters every time he puts that up. But um, just the, you know, he was picked ninth a couple years ago. You didn't know, like he's he's been kind of pushed into this like third guard, back up to Fox. Um, you didn't know where his career was going. I think you're just seeing now like, he is a playoff type player. They're allowing him to play um, more physical. I think he can really lock into a game plan. And in the playoffs, that's what you do, right? Uh, study Steph. And I know he's like a big tape guy. So he's studying him well. You could tell just how locked in he is into some of the off ball stuff. Steph will still tend to solve uh, defenders. I think he's got off a little bit more the last couple of games. But if you're a Kings fan, like looking at the bigger picture, and, you know, you can hear in Mike Brown's uh, press conferences, a lot of times he's still taking a couple steps back at times like, hey, this is good regardless of what happens. You have to feel good about what Davion Mitchell has shown this series as you look forward with this team. I can't wait. I can't Crazy. wait. How are you guys feeling? Uh, Uneasy or calm? Good. Yeah, no, I, I, I like them tonight. Um, I, I've, I'm, I'm one of the people who, who, <laughs> I'm one of the man. Winner of Game Five, I think, is winning this series, and like it, it, it just kind of boils down to you gonna walk into, you know, if the, it, I, I even, I was telling KC early, I, I get, I'm nervous at the thought, like if the Kings lost tonight, but somehow won Game Six. I'm nervous about game seven because I felt like the mystique of the home court is gone. Like if, if there's something in the Warriors head at all, it's gone. Cause they're like, we have, we already won here. We can win here again. Um, but I still, it, it, it all boil Anthony, it all boils down to respect. And I have, I have respect for the golden state warriors. And you talk about that clay game. Maybe it's looming. Mm -hmm. Jordan Poole can shoot. Maybe yeah. something from Jordan Poole is looming. And Steph has, you know, as, as great as Davion has been, and we've talked about you can't stop Steph. That's not what you do. You try to make things as difficult as possible. The frustrating thing with Steph is Steph can hit shots at a high degree of difficulty. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to – you just got to take what happens there. Uh, but I have a healthy respect for them. I think they're going to come out. They're going to come ready. The thing that, that stood out to me the most, and this is particularly regarding De'Aaron uh, yesterday, was he was confident. Yeah. He, he seemed to be confident in his – Finger, the game, the team's approach, he seemed to be a thousand percent confident. And I, I, I think that uh, I would hope would rub off on some of his teammates. And I, I think it rubbed off on some of the fan base as well. Yeah, I think that was purposeful. I think he did that sure. press conference so, you know, sure. in, a, in such a detailed way because he, he even mentioned that because he was the one that kind of wanted that news out. He said that, you know, because he, he didn't want to suddenly be showing up with tape on his finger or show up on the injury report and nobody knew what happened. But he said a couple of his teammates texted him because they didn't know about it until the news broke. Mm -hmm. And I think part of him so confidently coming out yesterday, I mean, like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Was because I think he knows his teammates are going to watch that and be like, okay, you know, he feels good. We should feel good. You mentioned, I mentioned the clay game that possibly looms. A Kings like 20 made threes game also looms, right? Like they yeah. have not shot it that well this series. Like, you know, one of these next three, they might just get crazy hot, you know, collectively. Mm -hmm. So I remember what, what was the game this year? They went like 10 of 10 in the first quarter. Nah, Memphis, Memphis game. Yeah. It went not 10 of 10 in the first quarter and they were like up by three. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, 
But then one of those defensive games might loom for but that. But they ended up winning that game by 30 because they just didn't stop. Like, yeah. They kept hitting the three the three point shot and they ended up winning by 30. So that could happen. I mean, look at Fox just growing up right in front of our eyes, man. Just look, look at our boy Fox just growing up. I also think I'm usually not really big into this because the players play. And especially when you talk about the Warriors, they didn't seen it all, done it all, man. They didn't seen it all, done it all. I think Golden One Center is gonna be crazy tonight, like and and not to intimidate the Warriors, but maybe propel the guys. Kings. Like yeah. I think, I think Golden One's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be rocking. I think this is gonna be the most rocking game of the series at the Golden One Center. This is has been incredible for Northern California. I think overall, I think it sets up potentially the next couple of years too. This being a thing. Um, and the nations loved it, right? Look at those ratings. So yeah. I agree with you. This has a chance to be the most confidently raucous crowd where if it gets back to seven, like there's going to be a lot of energy in the building, but I think you'll just game sevens are different in an arena, right? Every shot you're like, Oh, oh. I think there'll be well, less of that tonight. And at game seven, the makeup of the crowd could look a little bit different. Could be yeah. yeah like, could be. like, you know, we haven't seen that influx here, but a game seven could 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 sway some people's opinion. Could, yeah. It could. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, do you, last do you think this is regardless of the series? You think this is the end of go this version of Golden State as we know it? I think the series matters, right? If they if they go on a run here and like that's still out in front of them. They escape this series, they, they'll probably have home court against the Lakers next round, you know, Denver and Phoenix, like that doesn't there's not some Goliath out there. Like it's reasonable to believe if they escape the Kings like a, another finals run is is possible I, I agree but phoenix kind of feels like a goliath yeah. eh, do they i mean like you know ish waiting right at times is out there damian <laughs> lee's like their seventh man uh you know tory it's a lot of tory craig like I know, booker's a bad boy though Bo booker looks unbelievable but the other thing you got a question as the playoffs go on is is health of that team you know how they hold up so any anyway, my point is if they make a long run, I think there's a decent chance. Hey, run the band back together. If it hasn't failed, you know, don't uh, break it up. But yeah. if they fall in this series and they don't, you know, like there's going to be such a sour taste. I think Draymond's future is very much in question. I think Bob Myers' future is in question. The one thing people want to say last dance, that was Michael Jordan's last year. Like Michael Jordan was gone and done with the Bulls after that. Steph Curry will be here next year. Steph Curry yeah. will be here the next several seasons. So even if they rebuild, it's more of a retool around Steph. They're going to have to lose some payroll, right, with everything coming with the new CBA, the tax, all that. So big questions are ahead for them. Winning this series would make those questions a little bit easier, I think, for them. It's crazy, Anthony, and he's 100% right. The Warriors win this. They're looking at a home court. They're the yeah. sixth seed. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's crazy. crazy, baby. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> uh, Ant Man, appreciate you, brother. Thank you as always. See you out there tonight, big dog. All right. Hey, and by the way, if Phoenix wins that that Denver series, Kings could have home court throughout the West. Mm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's talk about take. it. Lot hey, take. Anthony, one one to know every day. <laughs> Let's Just trying to go one to know every day. Let's that's ride. all it Let's is. Well, this like is a pretty, pretty big one to know we're on one tonight. So yeah, no yeah, doubt, man. no doubt. Appreciate you, Anthony. Right, Thank you, brother. Yeah.